capital uh, once more. Uh, this night will be starting another two weeks intensive training on business analysis. And uh, what we are going to be covering is an uh, introduction to business analysis. We will have a look at uh, business analysis, a study case, a case study, business analysis rules, business analysis stakeholders, business analysis skills, business analysis or concept model. Business requirements, business analysis techniques, business analysis tool, project methodologies and framework, software development life cycle, project management life cycle framework, and uh, course. Yeah, that's it. This is um, what we're going to be covering within these tools. So, without wasting time, we're going to be looking at introduction to business analysis. the definitions and the importance of business analysis. According to International Institute of Business Analysis, business analysis is the prat practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Business analysis enables an enterprise to articulate needs and the rationale for change. Design Describe solution that can deliver value. Please put yourself on mute. So business analysis is all about change. First, you look at the challenges an organization or an enterprise is having that their problem is what we call need. They have a need. And that need is what you as a business analyst have come to provide solution for that their need. And to do that, you need to collaborate with the stakeholders to find out their needs. And when you find out your need, conduct a series of analysis to find out the cause of their need. Need here is a problem, challenges. Conduct a series of analysis, tests to find out the cause of their need. And the best way to solve their need or their problems, and the best solution to address their need within their capacity or within their budget. And when you identify that solution, 
then you implement that solution for them to address the need or to bring about change in that organization or enterprise. So basically, this is what business analysis is all about. This is what a business analyst does. It's very simple that you, you provide solution for the for company problems. So, and the project manager who works with business analysts, you manage the implementation of that solution with the business analyst. So business, and that's why we pay this course business analysts analysis and project management because they work hand in hand. And we are going to be making a lot of references. We're going to be picking a lot of points from International Institute of Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. That's where we're going to be making references because we believe that uh, their body of knowledge for now is a big authority in the market when it comes to business analysis. So why business analysis is very important. Business analysis is an agent of change. It brings about change as they introduce, manage, and facilitate necessary changes to your business model. So as a business analyst, you are a change agent. Collaboration with stakeholders. By collaborating with stakeholders, business analysts reduce rework on their project. So that's why companies tend to employ the service of a business analyst so that they can help them to reduce rework. Rework means after delivering solution, the solution will not meet the requirement specification because it wasn't planned. It wasn't gathered by, it wasn't analyzed by a professional. But when a business analyst delivers solution, you find out that the solution will meet uh, business requirements, uh, solution, uh, requirement specification because the business analysts do a thorough job, sequential, follow a sequential activity to come to a solution. Lower cost, the business analyst reduce projects rework under its life functionalities and requirement chance. They also identify and implement more cost-effective solution. As a business analyst, what organization do is that once they have a problem and they invite business, they first take the business analyst their budget. And the business analyst <coughs> will look for best solution in the market within their budget. And you find out that there is so many solutions out there, but if you are not a business analyst, you might not have the knowledge of all those things. For instance, um, so many solutions in the market are very costly. So for instance, looking at uh, SAP, SAP solution 
they've come with a lot of uh, analytical capabilities. They can you can use SAP solutions to do a lot of things, but they are very very costly. But what business analyst does is that in order to spend that kind of amount of money in one solution, they will integrate a lot of solutions. They bring a lot of third-party solutions and integrate them to provide the same value at a very low cost. Those value, those high, um, so those are costly solutions from big, big companies. So they will just come up with a collection of solutions from a lot of startups that are still very powerful, integrate them together and provide powerful solution. So they try to lower your cost of operation. increase return on investment business analysts increase the benefit achieved through investment as well as reduce the cost of implement implementation which ultimately increase uh, return on investment the lower the the the, the lower cost by finding more cost effective solution this is just what I've uh, explained. So the main thing is to lower cost. They can follow any route to lower their cost for company to, to, to increase their, their revenue is not only profitability, it's not only sales that increases company's revenue. Reducing costs is a, an effective way of increasing companies' revenue. And business analysts, they are very good at using lean, lean methodology to reduce company waste, company waste of resources, waste of time, and all these things are money. A business analyst can help an organization automate a, so a automate a process, a process that will take ten people one week to achieve. A business analyst can help a company to automate the process, and they find out that instead of taking ten people one week to do the job, a software ro a robot will just take um, one hour or even 30 minutes to do the job. And that is saving a, a, a lot of money for the company. So these are what they are doing. Ensure project success by gathering accurate requirements engage users manage stakeholders expectation and manage change of requirements in a pro in a, in, a, in a project delivery when you start working with wrong requirement when you do not understand your scope that's when you you, you gather wrong requirement and when you start gathering wrong requirement that's where your problem starts like i asked you people to um do cost estimation and some people start started um documenting their cost estimation using dollars while you are supposed to do your cost estimation in pounds that's the beginning of failure so a, a good business analyst cannot make such mistake because you must understand the requirement the requirement is to document your 
your project cost. Estimate your project cost in pounds. And you go ahead and estimate in dollars. That's where failure starts. So you must be, you must have eye to detail. You must be detailed. That's what business analysts. They are detailed uh, oriented people. And you have to engage the right users. When you are mean to gather requirements from um, the, the finance department and you, you, go, you go to sales department to gather requirements, you are inviting trouble for yourself. You won't even gather the requirements. You are engaging the wrong people. And they will not give you the kind of um, answers you want because you are not engaging the right people for your, for your projects or for your solution. You manage stakeholders' expectation. As a good business analyst, you do a proper stakeholder analysis to understand the stakeholders. You understand the expectation, and then you give them what they want. If there is changes within the, the pro ongoing project, you know how to manage changes so that your project will remain uh, in good shape. But if you don't know how to manage changes, any little change in your project can derail your project. So that's why business analysis is very important. In not only in an organization, but even in our personal life, in our society. If you have business analysis mentality, you can apply it everywhere, even in your home, managing your home, managing your family. You find out that you reduce waste, you improve the, the quality of living within your family with a limited amount of income. So let's have um, a kind of um, real insight about how this business analysis work. Because um, before I became a business analyst, I've been hearing so many so much about business analysis. You know, and uh, uh, for the fact that I, for me, I studied banking and finance in my first degree. So I used to call myself a business analyst because I studied a business course. But that you studied business course doesn't make you a business analyst. You study business management does not make you a business because if you don't know business analysis, most of us, they don't teach us business analysis. Even these days, or maybe now universities are beginning to understand business analysis because what they, they taught us in school those days, there is no atom of business analysis there. Because I don't see how they, with what we, we learn the how we can improve on organizations or whatever. So let's look, have a look at this case study to have the real insight of, of how business analysis work. Now, what we are going to look at is, um, this is um, a real estate company. And this real estate company, they provide um, housing solutions to people, to tenants. They, they help landlords to rent their, their properties, maintain the properties, collect um, rent from the, the, the tenant, remit to the landlord. So this is what the, 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 the real estate agent does. 
And when there is a situation, when there is a faulty uh, unit or when there is um, any kind of issue within the, uh, the properties they manage, they help to resolve those issues. At this point, something happened. There is a defective boiler within one of the housing um, estates. So here in UK, for instance, everything we do revolves around boilers. Boilers, you know, used to, that you, you bath warm water is boiler, you wash your hand is boiler, uh, even a heating system, at times use boiler. So everything we do revolves around boilers. So in the in 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 winter period, if there is a, a a faulty boiler that the boiler is not working, is a serious matter because no one can stay without boil. Nobody can stay without heating heating system. So. Now they're having defective boilers here and there, and it's taking long time to resolve this issue. If there is a faulty boiler, it should take like highest one day to resolve it so that people will not stay uh, in cold. So if this is a, a serious issue. But now it's taking long. Uh, customers are complaining that it's taking too much, it's taking long to fix these uh, boilers. So how do we solve this problem as a business analyst? They, uh, please put yourself on mute. So now they, they employ you as a business analyst to help company solve this their, their problem because they don't know what to do. So now, when you come in as a business analyst, what do you do? You look at the current state, the way they have been managing their business that has been causing this problem. You need to look at it thoroughly. And uh, when you are gathering your requirements, you find out that the way they handle this particular process of resolving faulty equipment or faulty boiler or issues like this is that when a customer identify a problem like a tenant, the tenant will call the help desk officer, which is a help support or support a unit. Then the support unit will receive and log the incidents and then contact the landlord. The landlord will receive and review the complaint. And then landlord will issue approval for the agents to take action. And then the agents will then contact the, the technician, which is the boy, the plumber. Then the plumber will conduct a site visitation to go and look at what's wrong with the faulty equipment or boiler. Then after the plumber have gone to the site, find out the, the incident was wrong, maybe find out that um, <clears throat> there is a, um, a unit of the boiler that's, uh, that need changing. Then the, boiler, the the plumber will go to the 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 store to pick spare parts and then go back to this is where I'm now. Go back to fix the fault, faulty unit, and then after fixing the faulty unit, you conduct functional tests. And if it's working, you will go back to the de help desk to submit paperwork. And after then, the help desk will now 
call the the customer or the tenant to notify that the plumber have finished the work to confirm if actually if everything is now okay and now the customer will or the tenant will confirm that everything is okay and that is how they have been fixing this issue and it uh, it takes longer time so it takes like one week to to observe all this process from start to the end now that's what we've done as a business analyst you've gone to you've gathered the requirements the document that is what we call current process or assist in business analysis now it's time to look at how do you improve this process what are you going to do we are going to uh, um, employ a simple um, gap analysis using um, lean methodology as well. So look at what we've done here. So look at what we've done here. Now we are looking at process within this supply chain that doesn't add value to this uh, uh, chain. Non-value process is what we are looking at. And after studying all this with the process owner to ascertain the level of value, each process is um, yielding to this part each process yielding to this uh, supply chain we find out that now the 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 the, the landlord have con uh, given a, a contract have uh, reached a contract with this estate company to manage their properties so landlord shouldn't be bothered about all these protocols because the, the 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 housing agents can manage this property on behalf of the landlord what the landlord is interested is let them pay the rent receive the rent on time and manage the property because landlord knows that from time to time there will be a tier and wear within the property and it should be maintained so the housing agents should take it upon the, themselves to manage properties and not involving landlord when there is a situation, minor situation, because this is a minor situation that they can handle. So we decided to remove landlord from this supply chain in order to save time, because we're talking about it's taking longer time. By the time we remove landlord, because you know this land, this landlord, they are big men. You contact them, it will take like um two days for them to say, okay, redo review and they even get back and approve. It can take two days or even three days before they can do that. Causing, causing this uh, bottleneck within the whole system. So if we remove landlord, you find out that things will work out quicker. And to do that, you find out that if it's taking them one week to do this, when we remove landlord, then we can break it down like three days to 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 fix this um, uh, boiling defective boiling uh, unit and once we do that we can reduce this a uh, long time they are talking about you cut call you reduce time and then that time the 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 plumber will use to fix one um boiling um 
the, the plumber can even use this time to now fix two defective boilers. And that's how we are now using gap analysis and the lean approach to reduce waste. Call this waste. Waste means waste of time. And waste of time means waste of resources within this supply chain. And when you've done your analysis and remove this, then you will get a new process where there is no landlord. And this is now your future state or to be. And this is the solution you are now delivering to the organization. So there are so many ways to deliver solution or improve or bring change to an organization. It mustn't be software. As a good business analyst, you have so many ways. That's why you can use analysis, analysis to help improve organizational uh, structure. In, in, or you can introduce a software that can do all these things, where they can log in um, incidents and incidents will be easy to manage. Like there is this software service now is very powerful. Is number one in managing incidents, help you to manage your incidents. So you can equally do this analysis, combine it with another software. And when you combine it with a software with this kind of analysis, you find out that you can even reduce it, the, the cost of uh, the, the time of uh, doing this, you can equally reduce it down. Even if it's taking like uh, now three days, you can equally reduce it to two days or even one day. So this is how you, a business analyst can help organization in so many ways. So this is, I'm just trying to give us at this beginning, let us have a picture of how this business analysis work. So, and with this kind of picture, if you, if you don't understand what business analysis means or how it works, with this picture, you should be able to understand, oh, if this is how it works. Yes, this is how it works. Do you have any question? before we continue. Okay. Then business analysis rules. Now we have so many rules within business analysis. Okay. We have um, categories, job title, and uh, position in the organization. So, who is a business analyst? Well, this is the role that you now want to. You want to be a business analyst. Business analysts are responsible for discovering, synthesizing, and analyzing information from a variety of sources within an organization or enterprise, including tools, process, processes, documentation, and stakeholder. Like what we've just done here is uh, we've analyzed the process and uh, document that process and the stakeholders. But like what we did is called process analysis. The business analyst is responsible for eliciting the actual need of stakeholders. When talking about elicitation, we're talking about gathering data or 
or data collection, that is a requirement elicitation. That's business analysis responsible for eliciting actual need of stakeholders, which frequently involves investigating and clarifying their expressed desire in order to determine underlying issues and causes. You gather requirements, analyze the requirements, you clarify, and then find out the cause of the, the, the problem. We use root cause analysis to do that. Call it cause and effect or fishbone diagram. We're coming to that later. So the activities that business analysts perform include understanding enterprise problem and goals, analyzing their needs and solution, devising strategies, driving change, and facilitating stakeholder collaboration. So that is what we do. Categories of business analysis. Business analysis, like a conventional business analysis, is, is uh, classified into two major categories. Some are uh, mainly based looking at uh, business requirements, and some are dealing with technical requirements. So here we have business, business analysts. When you start looking for a job now, very soon you start seeing a technical business analyst wanted. So you have business, so that when you see such situation, you won't be confused which one is technical business analyst. To have business, business analysts, to have technical business analysts. Business, business analysts are responsible for the research, visibility, justification, analysis of the requirement for a given project. So as a business, business analyst, you are the one to conduct research. You are the one to do this uh, uh, requirement gathering. You are the one to do the analysis. You are the one to do solution evaluation. You have to find solutions. You do all these things, and you, you are the one to, after analyzing, you make recommendation by drafting a business case. So once you draft a business case, your role as a business analyst, most of the time, comes to an end there. And then technical business analysts take it up from where you business business analysts stop. Now you the business the business business analysts have analyzed and provide and they recommend solution. Now technical business analyst is now implementing the solution. But in many cases we find out that you as a business analyst, after conducting the research as a business BA, you continue equally as a technical BA to help them implement that solution. So that's why at times you go to, if you're looking for work or an interview, they ask you, have you performed an end-to-end -end business analysis um, uh, have you managed the, have you participated in a project end to end? That is um, full, or have you observed a full project life cycle as a business analyst? So if you have um, initiated the project by doing the, all the business uh, BA role, conducting a, um, uh, investigation, gathering requirements, analyzing and uh, recommending solution. And then after then you continue to implement that solution 
and execute it, then that is uh, you 360 um, end to end or full project life cycle. The technical BA are responsible for utilizing technique, uh, techniques, methods, tools, and skills to translate business requirements into technical requirements. So that is what you do. Technical requirement means uh, designing the solution. Call it solution design. And then you understand those business requirements. And then you now try to translate that business requirement into a, 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 a tangible software or solution. So this is the, the difference between business BA and technical BA. So technical BA, you do solution design by writing user stories, acceptance criteria. You, you do um, use cases, diagram, and all the technical, you design all the solution so that the developers can work on that um, requirement and convert them into a piece of software. Business BA deliverables. There are project brief. Please uh, put yourself on mute. Then we have a business case, have project charter, cost stroke financial derivation. Business requirements document, benefit realization document, prioritization requirement, assist to be process design, policy management document. And these are most of the deliverables they, they produce. And some of the techniques they use is a pencil, they use most, they use SWOT. They use requirement gathering. They use quantitative analysis, which is data analysis. They use quantitative analysis. They use project benefits, uh, prof uh, value proposition. They use uh, Moscow analysis. They use assist and to be process mapping and data analysis at high level. All these. Um, techniques they are they use we are going to be um, creating all these things under business analysis and our business analysis techniques so don't worry we are coming there at this uh, point we are still uh, at high level we are not going to be giving detailed explanation of all this because it's just for you to, we are just listing it for you to know. We are not discussing them. So, then we'll come to technical BA. This is what they use, the deliverable they produce. They produce uh, use cases, mockups wireframes, personas, test cases, test scripts, data flow diagrams, swim lane, user journey, process mapping and data mapping. And the techniques they use is a UML, Unified Model Modeling Language. We call it behavioral diagram. They use the requirement engineering, data analysis, test driving, development. This is what they do 
in order to achieve most of these deliverables. Then here we look at job titles of a business analyst. Now you'll be you are going to be a business analyst very soon. So when you are going to be searching for jobs, these are the things you are going to be looking out for. You'll be looking out, you'll be seeing business architects. And if you are still very young in business analysis and they're not well trained, when you see business architects, you will just flip the job. After all, it's after all, I'm not a business, I'm a business analyst, I'm not a business architect. But it's the same thing. We just this the some companies tend to use architect instead of analysts. You see business system analysts. You see data analysts. Data analyst is the business analyst, but the, the, the specializes in data management. So in what we are doing now, we are basing in conventional business analysis, which just technical and the, uh, if you want to be a data analyst, you need to take another program in order to qualify to become a data analyst. But they are all business analysts. We have enterprise analysts, we have management consultants, they are still business, just um, mostly consulting firm. They prefer to call business analysts management consultant. We have process analysts. These are people who work mainly on processes. Like the, the process we've just worked on mainly is the work of process a business analyst, which is a process analyst. Because we see we improved on that process. A product manager is a business analyst. A product owner is still a business analyst, a higher business analyst in agile environment. The requirement engineer and the system analyst, they are all business analysts. So let's look at the organizational charts and where the business analysts fit in. This is how business analysts fit in in an organization. Now, this is the program director. This is the, the big man. And here we have a program manager. Then, we have the first um, kind of uh, department unit. We have head of projects. We have a PMO analyst manager. We have a head of business change. We have a head of communication. We have a head of marketing and testing, these are kind of departmental managers or HOD. Then under head of projects here, we have project manager who report to the head of projects. Then we have a project manager too. Then we have a project coordinator or project support officer. Then here we have uh, 
under PMO analysis manager, you have PMO uh, analysis, you have another PMO analysis and the PMO analysis. Then this is where the business analyst comes in. Head of uh, business change. Because I told you that a business analyst is a change agent. So you come under business change. Another business change to have business analyst, business. So this is where you fit in as a business analyst under business change. Now we look at the list of stakeholders in business analysis. Here we have the first stakeholder in business analysis to have a business analyst. The responsible business analyst is responsible and accountable for execution of these activities. We we'll have customer. Customer uses or may use products or service services produced by the enterprise. So most of the time, it is the customer's need that we will be working on. Like you see that. Um, housing unit, the defective boiler. We're trying to address the need of customers. So, so they are stakeholders. So have domain subject matter expert. Subject matter expert is any individual with in-depth knowledge of a topic relevant to the business need or solution. So if you have been working, for instance, you are working in a CRM, uh, working with CRM software, or you are working as a customer support uh, personnel, you know much about customer activities. So when it comes to issue of uh, customer relationship or relationship management and software, you as a customer support manager is a domain expert because you have good knowledge of softwares to manage customers and how to manage customers. So if a business analyst needs to find, to understand what is going on within that unit, then you are, you are the person to meet, to understand because that is your domain. So we have end users. End users are stakeholders who directly interact with the solution. If a company is using, um, for instance, Dynamics 365, which is a customer uh, management, uh, Customer's relationship management, that is a CRM, or we are using Salesforce CRM. This, the, the person using that CRM on daily basis to do their job, like sales reps or marketers, or even the admin, like uh, for instance, Salesforce admin, all these people using that solution, they are the end users. So if we, there is any improvement or anything, they are the people that are going to use it. So they are the end users. If you are working on that particular process or that kind of um, a solution, you need to carry them along to understand what they what is going on. We we did a bit a bit of this. Uh, in uh, project management. So, <clears throat> so these are the end users. Then we have 
implementation subject matter expert. So this subject matter expert, these are not, we have two types of, uh, two types of subject matter expert. We have domain. Domain are those ones that are working within that domain. And then implementation, Subject matter experts are those who are experts in implementing and installing, configuring such solution. <clears throat> For instance, now, if you come to, uh, let's say, most of these banks using all this uh, CRM solution, using all this uh, BB solution, innovative solution, they have technical partners like um, Pricewater, KPMG, Accenture. These are technical partners. So if like, for instance, um, Fidelity Bank want to implement a CRM solution to manage their customers, the only way for them to do it in order to avoid costly mistakes is to get technical partners like Accenture or Pricewaters to help them do the implementation. So if you are now employed by Fidelity Bank as a business analyst to help them carry out this operation, you need to find out who is their technical partner, which is implementation subject matter expert. And you need to work with them to do this uh, implementation. An implementation subject matter expert is any stakeholder who specialize, who specialize, who have specialized knowledge regarding the implementation of one or more solution component. We have operational support. Operational support is responsible for the day-to-day -day management and maintenance of the systems or products. These are um, business analysts as well. Those who, if organization is using this solution, if anything happens, there's somebody they call to come and fix it. That you are using, um, um, for instance, you are using a Microsoft uh, solution. If it's not working, there's somebody in that uh, company will call, I can't do this, I can't assess this. They will just come and uh, do troubleshooting and you get back to work. We we'll have project managers that drives the project. So there is no no need of um, much explanation about project because you guys are already project managers. Project managers are responsible for managing the work required to deliver a solution that meets a business need while managing the scope, budget, schedule, resources, quality, and risk. So this is what you guys have done in business uh, project management. Then we have regulators. These are stakeholders as well in business analysis. They regulate the industry that you, uh, you work on. So they are the people that try to um, enforce standard, like the data, uh, Protection officers, these are regulators. Health and safety officers, these are regulators. Uh, local councils, somebody's in local councils. At times, you cannot do any project without getting permission from the council. So they are regulators. Then we have sponsors. Sponsors are those people who initiate the project. They initiate the project efforts. You know, in organization, you can call them sponsors. But if you are working for, for, a, for a company, 
or they can be called clients. So they are big stakeholders. Actually, they are the, the, the sponsors are the people that will, will know the actual requirements. They are responsible for initiating the efforts to define a business need and develop a solution that meet the need. So they initiate it and they authorize the work to be performed and control the budget and scope for the initiative. They have suppliers. A supplier is a stakeholder outside the boundary of giving organization. For instance, the suppliers are now, if you apply trying to implement um, Power BI or related uh, business intelligence solution. So we have Power BI, we have Tableau. These are suppliers. You find out once they know that you are you are looking for that kind of uh, solution, they will start bombarding you with call. For instance, if you want to automate your system, we have a UI part and the automation 365. We have Blue Prism. Once they know that you are trying to automate any part of your business, you start seeing their calls, their email. So they are they are they are so they are big stakeholders as well, because it's from them that you procure the, the solution. And we have testers. Some are, sometimes we find out that testers are a business analysts, but sometimes they tend to stand on their own as the quality assurance um, personnel. Testers are responsible for determining how to verify that the solution meets the requirement defined by the business analyst, as well as conducting the verification process. Test has also seek to ensure that solution meets applicable quality standard and that the risk of defect or failure is understood and minimized. So, so this test has conducted series of tests before a solution can be deployed. So we have developers, but the developers we discuss here are the implementation subject matter expert. They can equally be called developers. So these are the list of stakeholders in business analysis. So if you are going to work as a business analyst, these are the people you'll be hoping to work with as a team. You must be having meeting with them at one point or the other within the project. And that's it. So let's look at one more thing and then we'll close for tonight. Is, um, the business analysis skills. These are soft skills you need to have as a business analyst. And they are analytical and problem solving skills. This means being creative thinker. It's creative thinking, decision making, learning, problem solving, system thinking, conceptual thinking, and visual thinking. So as a business analyst, you must be creative, you must be able to be analytic, use analytical uh, methodologies and solution and uh, use them to solve problems. So in, the, in order to do that, you need to apply all this uh, combination of scale. And learning here is that a business analyst, you, you read a lot. You read, 
you read because anytime you are working on a, a problem, you need to understand the problem. So in order to understand the problem, you need to read. And when you understand the problem, you need to find solution. And in order to find solution, you need to read. Anything, any activity, anything you do, you need to read to gather more knowledge. You do brain, you do a lot of brainstorming. So another skill is a behavioral characteristics, and these are ethics, personal accountability, trustworthiness organization, time management, and adaptability. You know, ethics means you need to be principled. You need to follow the, 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 the eti eti ethics, ethics within the uh, profession or within the organization or within the particular solution. Every solution might have some standard and you need to uh, try to follow so such every organization they have their standard and uh, personal accountability means that you should be able to uh, take responsibilities and be accountable for your action. And you have to be trustworthy. You must show, showcase that you can be trusted within your, within your project team. And you have to be organized. To have good time management and adaptability. As a business analyst, you range from one project to another project. Today, you might be managing and uh, working on an e-commerce solution. Tomorrow, you'll be working on a um, uh, customer's relationship management solution. Tomorrow, to, you, you might be working on a telecommunication solution. Next day, you'll be working with bank, banks. So you have to be adaptable. You can adapt to change, change, uh, changing the uh, solution, changing environments, changing uh, industry. So anywhere you find yourself, you should be able to blend in very well. Because not a uh, business anal analyst, you can't. You, you don't have an industry. There is no. Ind you are everywhere. Whether healthcare, whether telecommunication, banking, insurance, anywhere they call you, you are there. So that's what adaptability uh, stands in this respect. Business knowledge, you must have a good uh, business acumen, industrial knowledge, uh, organizational knowledge, solution knowledge, methodology, you must have this knowledge. You know, you must business acumen. You must know how to reduce uh, waste. You must know how to help uh, organization increase their profitability. You know how to help organization increase their sales, um, maintain their customers' loyalty. This is business acumen, and you must have knowledge of different industries. If you're only working in a bank. For long as a business analyst, you are not, um, you can't classify yourself as an experience, even though you've worked in a bank for 10 years or 20 years, you can't say you are an experienced business analyst. Someone who have worked in so many industries for four years might be more experienced than you that work in one industry for so the business analyst must have industry experience, but even the industry you tend to work with must know it very well. Even if it's only bad, that's why you must know that industry very well. And organization knowledge, any organization you are working with, 
you must understand that organization more than anybody in that organization. Everything you must know. If I have some people working in the organization, they might just know their department. They don't even know how the organization is making money. All they know that they go to work and go home. If it's um, sales, they'll just concentrate on sales. If it's in finance, they'll just concentrate on finance. If it's in payroll, they, just, they don't even know how organization is making money. What, but as a business analyst, you know everything. You know everything. And then solution knowledge. You must have diverse knowledge of different solutions. Different solutions like uh, you must have knowledge of like CRM solution, enterprise resource planning solution, e, um, e-commerce solution. Uh, diverse knowledge of different solution technologies. And then methodologies as well. Methodologies here means you, you not only you know how to use waterfall, you should equally know how to use agile methodology, and equally know how to use Six Sigma and the Lean approach. As you can see, that most of my training, even in um, project management, I talk about. I don't talk about only one methodology. I talk about all of them, but I will tell you that this is the one I want to use. Then communication skills. You must be a good uh, communicator. Communication means uh, verbal communication, non-verbal communication, reading and listening. Communication doesn't mean um, speaking uh, Queen's English. Oh, very good grammar. Yes, it's good. It's, it's part of it. But when you are speaking with English and the person you are talking to is not understanding what you are talking, you are not communicating. And the person that is using Pidgin English and the, the, the recipient is understanding very well, that person communicates more than you that is using Queen's English. That is communication. And you can use sign, sign languages to communicate and people understand you. That's nonverbal communication. You can use eye to eye contact, body movement. These are the written communication. You should be able to write a good report as a business analyst. And you must be a good listener. If you are conducting a workshop, you must be a good listener. When somebody is talking, you even if you don't like what the person, you must hold your peace. You must be patient to allow somebody to finish blabbing. You don't cut people short. That is rude as a business analyst. Interaction skills. Interaction means that you must know how to interact, you should be able to facilitate workshop, you need to, you should be able to lead, you must be a good leader, and uh, you should be able to influence and uh, work in a team. As a business analyst, you are a big negotiator. You negotiate and uh, conflict resolution, and above all, you should be a good teacher. Because as a business analyst, you conduct a lot of workshop. You know, so that is a uh, interaction skill. Then tools and technologies. You must have good um, knowledge of tools and technologies, like uh, mainly office productivity tools and the technologies business analysis tools and technologies, communication tools and technologies. So you must understand them very well. So these are the 
the scales that is required that you should have. So some of these scales, some of these tools, basic office tools, we'll discuss them, but we'll still look at them when we'll be talking about um, tools, business analysis uh, tools. We need to talk about them. They are like Visio, Lucy Chart, Draw.io, uh, PowerPoint, like Microsoft uh, 360, and the rest of them. All these things are tools like communication, tools like uh, Basecamp, um, Asana, uh, ClickUp, and uh, these are collaborative tools as well. And, uh, as a business analyst, you need to know, have knowledge of all these tools as well in order to effectively um, operate as a business analyst. So yeah, it's a very um, long class to start business analysis, but yeah, it's good. And we are going to stop here for tonight and we can take a um, few questions from you before we actually say good night. So if you have any question within this topic we've treated, you can bring it up. Okay, so it's good to understand that my class is very, my teaching is very effective as people do not ask questions. Okay, um, at this point, I think um, we call it a night. I say thank you for participating and uh, we'll continue to crack on within the week. So good night and remain blessed.